Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another time here. Welcome to the upper room. Welcome to a time to pray. Thanks. Thanks for making it. Thanks for being here. Uh, we continue uh, doing the study through the book of Daniel as we lead ourselves in a place of praying, a uh, place of prayer. And uh, we've been looking at the life of Abraham to learn from his excellent spirit, right? And yesterday we were at uh, Genesis chapter 14. Today we'll move on through Genesis 15 to Genesis 16. And we'll see something about Abraham that was not so excellent. Abraham had an excellent spirit, no doubt. But he was human, and his human got the better, the humanness got the better of him in Genesis chapter 16. But you can't look at Genesis chapter 16 without first looking at Genesis chapter 15, right? There was something that was troubling his heart, which the Bible lets us know in Genesis 15. In all the fact that God blessed him, God was with him, God enriched him, God prospered him, there was something that was missing in his life. And somehow, you know, I've had a teacher on this before, T.D. Jakes has taught on this before, you know, it's that place of both, both, right? It, it's somehow, it, it seems like God intentionally leaves a bot in our lives, right? Everything seems to be okay, but, and, and the bot of life is it's it's critical, it's important because that reminds us of our humanity, right? You know, Bible talks everything about name, about um, was Naaman, right? Naaman, uh, he was the general, he was powerful, he was this, 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 the but he was leprous, right? <laughs> the rich woman that touched Jesus' garment, she was rich, she was prosperous, but she had that flow of blood for 12 years, right? And here's our case with Abraham. Abraham was good, believed God, righteous, father of faith, everything. But he compromised, right? And that compromise is, is, is one that's living with us even till today, right? It's just the same as uh, the sin, the compromise of Adam and Eve, right? It wasn't personal, right? They did it. It was, it was localized, but the effect was worldwide, Right, we all feel it worldwide today. Abraham missed it, Lord, uh, in giving birth to a child outside of the promise of God. Until today, we're feeling the effect. As much as we're feeling the effect of the promise of his obedience, we also feel the effect of his disobedience. Right. Uh, so, just to quickly put there, two things we, we quickly learn from that is one, you know, every one of us has a bot in our lives, right? It's that place of our humanity, right? Everything is right, but every single person has a bot in their lives, right? For on this side of eternity, every single person has a bot in their life. And almost like God intentionally leaves it there to remind us of our humanity. Maybe it's also the same thing in the Garden of Eden, right? Everything was free for Adam and Eve. They could have anything they wanted to eat. They plucked any fruit, anything, but <laughs> the two trees, but the two trees. And maybe that goes back to boundaries, right? You know, these are other things I plan to share today, but as I share uh, these other things that come into mind, it comes to boundaries, right? God created us with boundaries, for a reason. Somehow God loves boundaries, right? He never puts us in any place where there are no boundaries. We, he talks about the fact that where the spirit of the Lord is as liberty. But he says, but don't use this liberty as an occasion for the flesh. You know, people miss it. They just hold oh, the liberty, spirit of the Lord. <laughs> it's like having people fornicating, having adultery, missing God, because they take for granted the flesh, right? The flesh is there to bite you. When you, when you think that there are no boundaries and you take boundaries for granted, you're going to make a mess of yourself. You're going to be in, get to a place where you never dreamt you could get to, right? Because you forget the bot. There's the bot. The bot is, 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 is a, remind, a reminder of the fact that we are mortal, right? That we are created beings, that we hold our uh, obeisance to our creator, Right, it's a it's a caution, it's a guide. We'll we'll continue after we we'll pray. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, Amen, 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 Amen. Thanks for praying. Thanks for praying. 
as we're just sharing in Genesis 16, early on in the morning, we'll continue therein. And we looked at the fact that Abraham compromised. Abraham compromised, right? He was waiting on God for a child. He had this fear. His fear in, it was that he would not have his own child, but his servant's child or his servant would inherit his, he, he, he would inherit all he owned. He would inherit his name. That was his fear. It was a fear in his life. And he took that fear to God. And God gave him the right word for the fear. But that word did not become whole inside of him, right? And we have to be careful that things we fear, right? Because the things we fear is a, becomes a weakness for us. It's a place where we can easily be led astray. It's a place where the enemy can easily get us. It's a place where we can be easily be defeated, right? Uh, fear does not lead to life. Faith leads to life. If you allow fear to rule your life, you, all you will have is deadness, not life. All you will have is darkness, not light, right? We're created to live by faith, not fear. So if you allow fear to rule in your heart, you cannot have peace. You cannot have joy. You cannot have the kingdom of God. I mean, residence on the inside of you. Abraham had a fear. Fear was everything was okay in his life, but he did not have a child of his own. Everything was okay in his life. Both did not have someone from his from his own loins to inherit all that he had, all the, that God had given to him, the promise of God in his life. He believed the promise of God in his life, but he, 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 was, he was doubting if that would be directly from his loins or from his servant, right? He rationalized God's word and said, oh, well, it could also be for my servant, not for me directly. And that created a fear in his life. It was also being held back by tradition. Tradition was that it was best to have inheritance from his own loins, right? All of that just played in him such that when Sarah came with the opportunity to compromise another option, yes, you serve God. Yes, God will do his own no. But maybe it's not true. Mishedi says it's true you, but not necessarily true me, your wife. You know, Sarah gave him an option. And because it was a weak point in his life, it was easy for him to follow and compromise, right? Partly maybe he wanted to make Sarah happy. Partly he just wanted to go past that fear in his life, you know. But he had a temporary leave. But that temporary leave became a permanent damage in his life and for generations to come, even up to today, right? And that's what sin does to us. When we're settled for anything less than what God has promised us, what God is set to do for us, it has a ripple effect. He might give you a temporary relief, but it causes it permanent damage, damage that cannot even be repaired even after God has forgiven you, right? It, it looks as if you're solving a problem fast, but then you, you have the damage for the rest of your life. It's worth waiting on God. It's worth trusting God and not trusting God half of the way, trusting God all of the way. It's what that Abraham had waited even up to the extent that he might not have a child. Test the word of God. Or taste and see that the Lord is good, right? That is what the scriptures tells us. And that is the only way to work with God. When we start compromising and beginning to do things for God, it, it adulterates what God is said to do in and for us. If he has given us a word, let's hold on to that word. If we don't understand that word, let's ask him. Say, God, I don't understand. Can I? Can you imagine if Abraham had gone back to God and said, God, I know you said you'll give me a child. What about Ishmael? Uh, what about Ega? Can, can we get it through Ega? He could have asked God and God would have told him yes or no. No, he rationalized God's word and did what he thought was right, which fell short of the promise of God, the, the intent of God. And that kind of colorized his life, right? He, he, though he still got the promise, but he also left, as it were, a, a thorn in his, in, on his side that we still feel even, even up to today. That wasn't God's perfect will. But, but man compromised and man had to live with that. We see several other examples. So I will see David. David compromised, uh, went, went into um, Beersheba, right? Even though God forgave David, 
the curse of God upon the life of David was a ripple effect generations after, right? God forgive David, but the ripple effect didn't go away, right? We saw all that happened to his lineage, just as God said, you know? So obedience, our obedience is not personal, right? It's going to affect people generations to come, just as our disobedience is also not personal. It's going to affect generations yet to come. So let's give heed to it. Let's not take God's word lightly because it is, it's, it's the effect is, is undetermined, right? It's unlimited. You know, let's believe him and let's believe him wholly so we can have the fullness of God in our lives and for our children's children also. Uh, may God bless his word. Thanks. Thanks for staying with me. Thanks for this time praying together. Have a great remaining of the afternoon. See you tomorrow, God willing. God bless you.